G'day folks. I thought I'd take this opportunity to um, show some of you folks that don't know me very well um, what I've actually been working on here on Great Chesterford Junction. I'll, I'll, I'll sort of do um, a circuit of the, the railway starting here with the uh, engine shed uh, which is an old uh, super quick kit I've had for years and it's simply been plonked there because I didn't have an engine shed. Uh, this is a day pole kit uh, the turntable that I, I built and motorized uh, the motor underneath is um, a combination of a, um, a geared motor and uh, it's also made up with uh, Meccano bits and pieces gearbox with belts and all that sort of thing it works quite well and runs very slowly um, in the uh, engine shed it's been sorted out there are inspection pits in there all lined with uh, brick little steps were made we can put that back down and um, from the engine shed we move around to the main station area there's just the island platform uh, being developed there at the moment but there's, there's a platform to go behind that and uh, behind that again in this uh, well that you can see that's an access well I can pop up from under there um, that will be covered with removable scenery uh, which will be there you'll notice uh, there's a background on the wall which has been made up from pictures and um, printed out and stuck on the wall um, this layout uses uh, manual point control which is a system that I've sort of put together over a couple of years a bit of trial and error involved but that's the point levers there and uh, it gets quite uh, complicated when you go underneath the board uh, whether this will show up I don't know it's a bit dark under here but uh, you can see there's connecting rods everywhere and uh, yeah they travel through to um, brass hinges which uh, have a, a point actuator in them and there's micro switches connected up to them and everything for um, route selection and frog um, control polarity uh, this is the uh, control panel uh, there's still a lot of LEDs to go in here and this can be lifted up to any angle in between there and uh, and down flat it's done really so that I've got easy access through the room here um, I can push that down if we Get one of our portly friends walking through here we can just uh, tip it down like that and the access is much better so there and then we come down to the uh, end of the platforms and uh, there's a good yard down here not very well established at the moment but uh, the basics are there and uh, this little tunnel here um, leads out through the wall of the room uh, into my workshop where the track does a, a lap of the workshop and uh, I'll show you that in a second and uh, to access this track in here this um, board that you can see this uh, plywood lifts off so there's easy access for underneath um, there's a couple of Metcalf buildings here but um, I've also um, added this um, photograph stuck on the wall uh, to give the illusion of uh, depth and the street going off into the distance same uh, down this end here I'll just zoom in a bit on that um, this is one of my photographs taken actually in uh, Vista in England and uh, yeah I just sort of put it into my uh, back scene and there's uh, a series of uh, printed uh, shops that are stuck on the wall here as well and all adapted to um, oh, I put my grandson's name on there Liam and my other grandson James is down there and the other young fella Sam he's actually the proprietor of the model shop there but we can't see his name very well on the shop I'll have to do something else for Sam so he's up there in the lights yes and then from the um, from the little bit of town the track curves around and uh, crosses a, uh, a drop down flat across the doorway 
and then uh, approaches this section here which is the start of the mainline fiddle yard and uh, there'll be a, a tunnel portal here and there'll be scenery up above here which will be resting on this um, bit of angle so it's removable so I can get access to the track uh, you know possibly to repair these point motors if necessary or just to clean the track and uh, the fiddle yard continues around here now I'll, I'll come back to this uh, section here this is a little barred field I'll come back to that in a moment but the fiddle yard continues around here under the little barred field and uh, I've got a lift up again removable scenery here uh, and uh, so I can access the fiddle yard and any problems that may occur in there and that uh, fiddle yard continues on around to the engine shed where we started now if we um, We'll go outside the room and have a look. Just bear with me, I'll drop down the, the flap and then we'll continue on. Right, we're out in the workshop now and uh, you can see this is where the uh, track comes through the wall and it's on a, on a slow uh, incline around the workshop. It's um, about 1 in 70 uh, up along this wall and then travels around uh, to the next wall. Uh, again on about the same incline and uh, where it meets uh, a this is a drop down bridge so that I can get through that doorway and the main door has another drop down bridge which just simply lifts up and clicks into place just align that properly uh, it's got ball catches underneath to allow me to do that and uh, they also act as the electrical contact. It's a good system, works really well. And, uh, and then of course the uh, track continues up, it's about 1 in 90 up here where it's uh, going into through the wall again to uh, go up to Little Bardfield. So we'll go back into the room and this is where the, the tracks come through the wall. Just here and then we're above the fiddle yard as I showed you before and then uh, this is the little barred field it's a through station and it's only a short little platform but uh, it's, it's uh, just right for what I need I think and then the track continues on around through this gap in my peninsula wall here and if I can put the camera down here I don't know whether this will work properly, but the track continues on below the next um, branch line station, which is a terminus, and that curves around and goes out through the wall. I'll go around and show you that bit in a second. So right, there we are. Now while we're here, I've got um, also another fiddle yard here down below a little barn field. Uh, which uses uh, removable cassettes and uh, this is the only cassette I've made at the moment that just holds say one rail car or a low car yeah, so that's just a small one but uh, I've got a few feet here where I can have varying lengths of um, uh, cassettes sit on here so to suit different lengths of train so really that gives me unlimited storage potential um, now around here that camera correctly. Uh, that uh, track I showed you that's going out through the wall goes out through there. Now there's a storage room behind this wall and uh, a very narrow one and the track rises again out there and then it comes in through the wall just higher again here and into Little, Bam uh, Little Bamford, into Bamford Terminus. Now Bamford and Little Bardfield uh, were part of a layout that was owned by a gentleman called Murray who unfortunately now is deceased and uh, Murray's friend um, was instrumental in uh, allowing me to uh, have this um, this as part of my layout. It turns out it was exactly what I designed 
pretty much to do in here anyway, but Murray had already done it in a different format. So Murray's layout lives on uh, in a slightly changed way, but it's still going, which is kind of nice, I think. Now, um, I'll show you something else in here before we uh, have a look at the storage room. Uh, as part of um, Great Chesterford's uh, storage, uh, I've got a sliding fiddle yard underneath Bamford here and uh, that's got uh, a catch at each end which um, slides into a, uh, a plate and locates uh, the tracks that are actually on the on the sliding yard. I'll pull it out so you can see it. Right, this is the sliding yard. Um, can hold uh, five coaches and uh, at the end of the yard, there's a, a loco storage area as well, which uh, is under here. And uh, the theory behind it is that a, a train with five coaches can come into the sliding yard. It can uncouple at, at this point here, and then the loco can um, move forward into the, the loco storage area and uh, eventually run around if it needs to. It uh, also has its own control panel, uh, which probably makes sense to only me, because <laughs> I built the blooming thing. And uh, that also folds down for easier access to the yard. Uh, there's also um, uh, webcams uh, going in here. There are more to go in yet, so I can see what's going on, uh, especially for uncoupling. And uh, those webcams are connected up to uh, a computer system, which is under here as well. I've got two screens. Uh, so it's like a, a closed circuit TV system uh, that uh, allows me to have a better idea of what's going on. Right, we're now in the storage room. And this is where the uh, track comes through the wall on the lower level. Over this bridge, uh, which is uh, a folding bridge, it folds in the centre, so it folds in half as well as folding down. Uh, it's all connected over here with a very simple wiring connection. Just a couple of alligator clips on screws. And it travels around the, uh, the room on a bit of board attached to the wall. And uh, it goes all the way around here, climbing at uh, 1 in 70. And uh, it eventually travels back in to the room to go to Bamford at the higher level through this hole here. So you can see there's the, there's the two holes for reference. Um, yeah, so that's how I gain the height. So there you have it. I think that's it. That's about all I can show you from the moment, but I, I hope that gives you a better idea of how this room works. And uh, I'm just showing you an aerial view here so you can get an idea of uh, how it looks. And uh, yeah, so it's all all go from here, onwards and upwards. I think there's still a lot of work in front of me though. But one day we'll get there. And you can see uh, here's a better view of uh, Bamford. So there you are folks. That's where we're at at the moment. Cheers. Cool man.